Welcome to another lesson for N2 Electrical Trade Theory. Please remember to support this YouTube channel by watching all the adverts from the start to the finish. Now, this is the third part of module six that we'll be looking at, and this is DC generators, but the entire module six makes up 10% of the national exam paper. For DC generators, in terms of the function of a generator, it is to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. So yeah, we have a prime mover, which is moving the rotating assembly. For the operation of a generator, as the coil rotates and cuts through the lines of flux, an EMF is induced. It is important to note that for a generator, EMF is in the same direction as current flow. To influence the size of the induced EMF, we can increase the strength of the magnetic flux density, increase the rate at which the lines are cut, increase the number of pole pairs, or increase the number of coils inside the armature assembly. To define commut commutation, it is the reversal of EMF and current when transferring from one segment to the next. Now, the negative consequences of commutation is sparking at the brushes, which can lead to damage at the commutator's surface. To overcome the effects of commutation, we can use brush shifting, interpoles, and compensating windings. Yeah, we have a separately excited generator, which means that the DC supply to the field coils is completely separated from the armature. To influence the size of the excitation, we use a variable resistor. There are three types of self-excited generators. We get series, shunt, and compound. They are known as self-excited because they produce their own excitation. For a series generator, we are producing armature current and therefore supplying electrical load current remains the same in a series circuit. For a shunt generator, the generator produces armature current. Most of the current is supplied to the load and a small amount of current goes through the shunt winding. For a compound wound generator, this is a cumulatively compound generator, which means that the field windings are in the same direction and therefore the magnetic fields will assist each other. So we have a combination of a series winding and a shunt winding, which means the compound wound generator uses the positive characteristics of a series and shunt generator. To draw and label the circuit diagram for a shunt generator, showing the direction of current flow, the power input and power output. So here we have a shunt winding connected in parallel to a generator. We use a small letter G to remind us that this is a generator. Therefore, the generator is producing armature current and supplying electrical load. A small amount of current passes through the shunt winding and we will call this I shunt. For a shunt generator, we have a shunt winding called R shunt, and the resistance inside of the armature conductors is referred to as RA. Now, in order for current to flow in the circuit, we need a terminal voltage. So therefore we have a volt supply across the terminals. However, it's important to note that it is the armature that produces the EMF, and for a generator, the EMF and the current is in the same direction. For a generator, it's mechanical in, so therefore it's power in at the armature assembly and power out at the supply. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to uh, watch those adverts from start to finish in order to support this YouTube channel. Thank you.